Uh, uh, tradition be damned. We what? are going live. <laughs> it's official. Let's do it. All right. It just feels so great. Uh, it just feels so good to be breaking all the rules, you know? Mm -hmm. I haven't been live in no, so no. long. Did you say no. live or alive, Craig? Both. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the beach. The slow laugh, Chris. The hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Both. So I was like, I know that's right. I know <laughs> This is gonna be confusing because there's two curses on the show tonight. Oh no. I'm already confused. Uh, well, hopefully hopefully that wasn't just about life in general. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone noticed that Facebook has like changed the language in their share button and makes it so it's almost impossible to type something when like as a, as an addition when you share something? It makes me so mad. You should write Zuckerberg to him. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I hope he's watching this live feed right now. He's Six, a huge fan of the show. Seconds, so. Yeah, yeah on, well, tell him to get back to work. He can watch the show later. There's a replay. Chris, you didn't disable the chat, did you? I can't see the chat. Uh, no, I don't think I did. Does anyone else see the Like when you watch the video, the chat should be live on the uh, It is telling me that it's having trouble playing the video right now. It tells me I can comment. Oh can my god, say I something? It. it's back. Okay. Back to work. <laughs> oh man, crisis averted, everybody. All right, 20 seconds, Chris. 20 seconds? Oh man, uh, I should have wrote a show tonight. <laughs> you got time, you got time. All right, 20 seconds to write a show. We can do this, everybody. Uh, Al, how much, what do I got for time? You got nine seconds, what do you got? Nine Ow. seconds? Uh, uh, all right, I gotta think on my feet. Uh, uh, hold on one second. Uh, well, hold on three seconds. Two. All right, everybody, one. we all good to go? Yep. I, I, all right, I think I got this here, bear with me. Uh, it's Tuesday night. You've been dreaming of mashed potatoes, and you still can't find a way to pass the gravy from six feet away without spilling. This is quarantine! <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome everybody once again to Quarantine, the game show that gives thanks and only asks that you wear a mask in return. My name is Chris Iannucci, back again as your host. So thankful to be here for all of you tonight because it's a very special edition of Quarantine. It's Friendsgiving here on Quarantine. Woo! The, mood, the mood is set, the time is right, the eggnog is spiked. And we are gonna start off this holiday season right with some good friends, new friends, old friends, friends who are about to become friends right here, right now. Uh, and uh, let's get started by introducing you to tonight's teams. First off, if you're a fan of the show, you've seen them before. If you're a fan of podcasts, if you're a fan of comedy, you probably know who they are. It's everybody from the Half Hour Radio Hour joining us tonight from, uh, from in and about Chicago. We have Craig. We have Ellen and we have Chris. Give a big wave for the folks at home. And uh, Half Hour Radio Hour, how are y'all doing tonight? We yes. are good. Awesome. Excited. Feeling Excited? Giving. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. Nice. You guys got your, your, got your boozy eggnog? You got your-, uh, uh, your, your... Uh, I, got, I got a that's boozy PBR. Sound. That's the, it's the eggnog <laughs> of beers. The uh, eggnog of beers. You can, you can thicken it up that. a little bit and it would be just like an eggnog. <laughs> it's almost nice. like it without the thickness. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are we are so thrilled to have you all back on the show tonight, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. But uh, let's let's meet your opponents tonight. Uh, joining us from one of, if not my favorite place to be when I'm back home in Rhode Island, Ooh. the Providence Improv Guild. Tonight we have Holtz joining us Ooh. for the first time uh, on the show as a team. And uh, on Holtz tonight we have Emma, we have Chloe. And we have Becca give a big wave to everybody who is watching back home. Yeah. Holtz, Holtz, how we doing tonight? We're good to be right. here. Good, having a good time, getting okay. loose, getting mm -hmm. ready to do some trivia action. Oh yeah, nice. my brain is ready. Awesome, well, that's what we like to hear. And again, best of luck to you. 
Uh, and uh, as I say, uh, tonight we have a lot of things to be thankful for, but there is nothing that I am more thankful for this very evening than the man behind the curtain, the guy who runs the show. It is my brother, our tech guru, Al. Al, how is it going tonight? It's going fantastic, buddy. I'm thankful for you too, bro. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Happy Friendsgiving Aww. to you. And uh, I know this year, uh, unfortunately, I will not be able to, you know, be joining you for Thanksgiving like we usually do, what with uh, coronavirus and, and distance and all of that. But mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a, a surprise. I know your favorite part of the turkey is the wing. Uh, we always used to split it off where uh, I do the wing and, and uh, you know, you take the, the one half, I take the other half. So I'm going to make sure this year I cut the wings off my turkey and I mail them to you oh, in Massachusetts. Oh, you're the best. So you have something to eat. It takes about seven to 10 days to get there. Perfect, so perfect. Make sure you eat it quick because you don't want it to get old. Yeah, the, um, these guys aren't going anywhere. They've been eating Thanksgiving dinner for the past three weeks. And uh, so I, I think we'll be good. We'll, we'll make it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you again for everything that you do. And we'll check back with you later on in the show. Yeah. Uh, so good luck, for, those of you, for those of you who are joining us tonight for the first time, welcome. Uh, we know you're going to have a great time. Uh, and so as a, uh, an opportunity to introduce the show to you, I'm going to run through the rules and also for our contestants so that they have a refresher. Here's how this game works. In front of me, I have a lovingly handcrafted, basted to perfection series of uh, trivia categories that are all based on, in this instance, some Thanksgiving and some slightly quarantine related trivia that I and our team here at Quarantine have cooked up for you all. So here's how this works. I will give you the category that the trivia is about. You'll have a few seconds to, to, to talk amongst yourselves when I give you a question. If you answer the question correctly, you get the points. If you get the question wrong, or if you run out of time, that means the opposing team has an opportunity to steal for half the amount of points. Now, in between trivia, we also have a couple of extra games in store for you. We will explain the rules to those as we get to them. And for those of you who are watching at home, don't just sit there because we're going to have a few opportunities for you to get in the chat and answer some audience prompts to help get these games going and vote for some of your favorite answers to help the teams get some extra points, starting right now with our first audience suggestion. So for all of the folks in chat land, here's what we need from you. We need a suggestion of an animal that isn't a bird. Not a bird, but an animal. So get those fingers going, type that into the chat, and uh, we have our, uh, our friends Rebecca, Tommy, and Al, they're gonna pick the best suggestions that you can come up with, and we'll use those later on in the show. But let's get started with our first trivia category. Now, I know Thanksgiving is just a couple of days away, and of course, Everybody wants to talk turkey. It's the most important part of the meal, and everybody just worries about whether or not they're going to have enough bird, and whether it's done, and call the Butter Bowl Turkey Heartline, and blah, blah, blah. But here on Quarantine, we like to look out for the little guy. We pay attention to those unsung heroes of the dinner table. We have a little saying here. We're not ride or die. We are side or die. So our <laughs> first category tonight is going to be some trivia that pertains to the side dishes that help make Thanksgiving one of the greatest meals of the year. So before we got started tonight, we flipped a coin and half hour radio hour, you won the toss, which means you're gonna be getting the first question. This is round one where all questions are worth 100 points. Stealing gets you 50. Half hour radio hour, y'all ready for this? We are ready. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Well then let's get started. Here's your first question again for 100 points. Invented by Dorcas Riley in 1955, this Turkey Day side staple traditionally consists of six ingredients and purists say that adding anything more is heresy. What is the side dish that I am talking about? What was the year? 1955 by Dorcas Riley. My brain thinks stuffing. Mine did too. You know, I feel like stuffing had to be, my first thought was ambrosia salad. What? I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna, I think we should go with stuffing. I'm sure it's delicious. I just. Final answer? Stuffing? Yeah, yeah, yeah stuffing. Yeah. Final answer. Unfortunately, stuffing is not the correct answer, which means. Pulse! I'm going to be saying okay. your name like that all night tonight. Pulse! You have an okay. opportunity to steal for 50 points. What did Dorcas Riley invent for the Thanksgiving table? I'll be honest, my mind went right to ambrosia salad. <laughs> I don't know why. Chris is astounded that two people know what ambrosia salad is. 
that. I'm going to Google it. I'm sorry. It's right. like, it's I cool. have no idea what ambrosia salad is, so I'll defer to you two if you think that's the way to go. I thought sweet potato casserole or whatever the... You, uh, or can you okay, I will need an ingredients? answer from you. I will okay. need an answer from you. Why not sweet potato casserole? Why what? not? Because it's sweet like, potato casserole yeah, is your final yeah, answer. Casserole. So there's that. sugar, there's marshmallows, there's other stuff. There's, Unfortunately, there's it is a casserole. <laughs> it's a casserole. But Dorcas Riley worked for the Campbell Soup Company. It's green bean casserole. Oh. Oh. All right, all right. At least it wasn't was in the salad. neighborhood. So no wasn't... points awarded for that. But uh, we all learned a little something, as we like to say here on the show. So uh, hmm. let's move on to the next question. This one is for Bolts for 100 points. This side dish ingredient finds itself cooked into many different forms, but its root actually comes from its native home in Peru. Today, it finds its way to the table by way of African-American culture who incorporated the vegetable into meals because of its similarity to a traditional African crop. What is the vegetable? Yam? Y'all? Maybe yam? Yeah, let's try yam. Yeah, why not? Why Final not? answer? Yeah. Unfortunately, yam is not correct either, which means Whoa. half hour radio hour. What do you think the vegetable is? Can we hear the question one more time? Sure thing. Uh, side dish ingredient finds itself cooked into different forms, but its root actually comes from its native home in Peru. Today, it finds its way to the table by way of African American culture, who incorporated the vegetable into meals because of its similarity to a traditional African crop. I just want to say sweet potato. That, uh, that's a yam. That's, that's the same thing. I do need an answer from you. I do need an answer from you. It's not. It's not. It's absolutely not corn. It's. Uh, let's try cranberry sauce. Corn. Corn's from North America. Cranberry sauce. Your final answer. What? Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, it is not cranberry sauce. You should have gone with Ellen. Sweet potatoes are from Peru. Yams are from Africa. There is a difference. They're two oh. completely different vegetables. Oh. What? Sweet potatoes are native to the Americas, but they're very similar to yams, which are a traditional African crop, and that's why so many people get them confused. Uh, but uh, there is an extra little tidbit of trivia that you can use <laughs> while you're on your Zoom Thanksgiving dinner to impress your family and friends. So no points on the board yet, but let's change that. Half hour radio hour. <laughs> this one is for you for 100 points. Legend has it that this side dish owes its American roots to Thomas Jefferson, who brought his personal chef to France in 1784, where he learned to perfect the plate. And he returned the, with the recipe where it was popularized at Monticello. According to Google Trends, today it is the most popular side dish from Georgia up the coast to Delaware. Oh, that's a Okay, my first thought was place. mac and Stop cheese, Delaware. but it might be mashed potatoes. I first thought of mashed potatoes. Let's do mashed potatoes. But mac and cheese makes sense too. Well, I mean, what's more French sounding? Macaroni? Mac macaroni, it's, it's, I feel like maybe it's macaroni and cheese. <laughs> but I think it's Italian. Macaroni, like, you know? Okay, I'll give you a couple yeah. more seconds and I will need an answer from you. I defer, I defer. I think... go with your gut. We said sweet, we said pot mashed potatoes first. Let's go, go mashed potatoes. Okay. Let's go mashed Final potatoes. Final answer is mashed potatoes? Final answer. Half hour radio hour, I'm sorry, it is not mashed potatoes, which means Pulse, Pulse, what do you think it is? Can this you see is it? I think potatoes rotten, no? Could it be potatoes are rotten? That's literally French. Oh yeah, that's a French word. Sure I don't is. know what they're but doing they're... South of Delaware, but <laughs> yeah, this, I, I think, let's I like go the... with. I like that. I like okay, it. I do need an answer from you. Potatoes are rotten is your final answer? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, Ellen, you got to start trusting your gut more. It's macaroni and cheese uh, is the correct what? answer. That's O for oh. two on Ellen knowing the answer <laughs> Listen to Ellen. and not yeah. saying it. Yeah, listen right. to Ellen, everyone. Listen to Ellen. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, this one stays with Pulse. This is yours for 100 points. OK, we got this. You got this. This side gets its start back in the 1890s where it came to be a popular dessert. In the 1960s, however, the product, the product line expanded to include savory and vegetable flavors like celery and tomato, and even encouraged people to dump in their Thanksgiving leftovers to make a Thanksgiving salad. What is the product? 
I'm so confused. I can repeat the question if you need me to. Yeah, can you repeat the question? Sure thing. This product got its start back in the 1890s where it came to be a popular dessert. In the 1960s, however, it expanded its line to include savory and vegetable flavors like celery and tomato, and even encouraged people to dump in their Thanksgiving leftovers to make a Thanksgiving salad. What is the product name? The product has celery and tomato flavors as well as some type of dessert like, origin let's story. Let's a dessert and then become a salad. <laughs> um, I was going to say that in the South, which is just mayonnaise and stuff. Say that again? Mayonnaise? Can you give you a couple more seconds and I'm going to need an answer from you. What did you say, Chloe? I, it's not important. What about like cream cheese? That makes sense. Uh, I need a final answer from you or I got to call time. That makes sense. That makes sense to cream me. Cream cheese? Yeah. Final answer? Final answer is cream cheese. Pulse. It's not cream cheese. I'm sorry. <laughs> Which means half hour radio hour, you have an opportunity to steal for 50 points. What do you think it is? I think I got it. I think it's jello. It's amb that's ambrosia salad. <laughs> okay, I, then, then, then that's it. probably a good guess. Jello? Final that answer? answer? Yes. Finally, it's Jello <laughs> for 50 uh, points. Yeah. Ambrosia making a comeback for the third time in the first <laughs> round. I'm gonna have to like make it now or something. No, yeah. you don't. <laughs> so I think everybody should try it at least once in their life, and then you know, once you come down from the sugar rush, I actually do it like it. I don't know. I, maybe I like it's just it me. too. Well, I mean, there's no, there's no uh, speaking for taste. But anyways, this last question of the category stays with half hour radio hour. This is yours for a hundred points. It's no surprise that this all American ingredient would grace the plates of settlers and indigenous alike at the first Thanksgiving. But this food became so popular in its native land that by the time of the Civil War, Ulysses S. Grant demanded that they be provided to his soldiers for their Thanksgiving meal. What is the ingredient? Okay, so think back to the 1800s here, something we haven't said yet. What do you need in Thanksgiving? Is this where corn comes into play? He said something about their native land though, which makes me think it's like, Potatoes or something like, no, like potatoes aren't from the United States. They're from they're from yeah. And he said native house. land, like the native land would be. He said something about they were popular in their native land as I'll well. Give you a few more seconds. I'll need an answer from you. I I think it's corn. I give think it a shot. It's corn. Final yeah, answer: right. corn. It is not corn, which means pulse. You have an opportunity to tie with fifty points. What is the name of the ingredient? Again, I can repeat the question if you need me to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's no surprise that this all American ingredient would grace the plates of settlers and indigenous alike at the first Thanksgiving. But this food became so popular that by the time of the Civil War, Ulysses S. Grant demanded that it be provided to his soldiers for their Thanksgiving meal. What is the ingredient? So it doesn't mean it has to, it doesn't mean that it's native to the United States. So it could be potato. Potato. I don't think we've you. said potatoes yet. Well, we said, right, we haven't just said classic potato. Yeah. We just circle. Yeah, that. What's the all American then if it's potato? Yeah, that feels really nice. Class. Final answer? Yeah. Potato. Yeah. You sound very sure about that. <laughs> uh, no, it is not potato. You it's cranberries. Eat. Cranberries. Oh. Oh. They're native, native to the good old, well, what is now the U.S. of A, but uh, native to the Northeast, the cranberry, all American, and so popular yeah. that Grant needed it for his soldiers. Well, that's the end of the first round of trivia in round one, but there is still an opportunity to make up a few extra points with our next game. Now, everybody remembers back to when they were in elementary school, and what did y'all do the week uh, of Thanksgiving before you went home? You made a hand turkey, didn't you? you? Traced your hand on a piece of paper. You made the coolest little turkey that you could. Well, we don't do exactly that here at Quarantine. Uh, now, earlier I had all of the contestants trace their palms on a piece of paper for me, but this is where the audience suggestion comes into play. Al, what do we get for a suggestion for an animal? 
For an animal, Chris, they came up with an anteater. An anteater, which is a fantastic Thanksgiving mascot for all of you to draw. So here's how our next game works. We're calling it Hand Jive. <laughs> I'm going to need you to take your hand tracing that you have in front of you. We're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. Now, you're each going to have to draw your best version of a hand anteater. And in the process, you're going to have to show the audience at home, not just your anteater, but something that you're very thankful for this year. Take a lesson from your old elementary school playbook. And we're going to show these to the audience when the 60 seconds is up. And the audience is going to vote on which team they thought did the best, cutest, most creative, adorable job. Everybody ready to go? Okay, so now 60 seconds on the clock. It's up. Remember, you are drawing an anteater that shows everybody at home exactly what you're thankful for. Ready, set, go. All right. We, uh, we, we've had a lot of practice doing uh, hand turkeys here around the studio at quarantine. Um, we've just been trying to really work down the mechanics of which way to do it. Do you want to do front, left, right, upside down, fingers together. There's so many different configurations, but we haven't done anteater yet, so this should be exciting. We've been experimenting with the double hand butterfly and or wings. Very Yeah, it, it always just turns out I'm thankful for the Wu-Tang Clan. Yep. Um, which I am, but... Gets you me know, every time. Well, they're nothing to fuck with, so... it's That's a very good point, Al. Yeah. And, um, and I'm thankful for that, too. 20 so, seconds, uh, Chris. What we got on time, Al? 20, 18 seconds now. 18 seconds left to go. 15. Contestants. Nice. I hope everybody's feeling super creative. Remember, these are supposed to be adorable... And they're supposed to they're supposed to make your five seconds, Chris. Want to hang them on the fridge. Two. So five seconds left to go. One. That's All time. All right, everybody, writing utensils down. That is time. So here's how we're gonna do this. Everybody, the best you can, hold up your hand ant eater. Let's just call it a hand eater uh, to the screen in the proper direction. And we're gonna give everybody an opportunity to show the folks at home exactly what they did. Let's start with Pulse for this one. Uh, let's see, Emma, you want to show the audience at home what you drew? Yeah, I do. Awesome. And uh, can you describe your, your artistic vision here? Right. Um, so I was like, okay, so they have like the, the snout thing. So I placed that here and I said, no, wrong. And then I put it in one of the fingers, the smiley face to indicate the soul of the Where the actual there. face is. Yep. And his, and his feelings. Is there, <laughs> is there uh, anything on there that, um, that, that shows uh, what your anteater is thankful for? Um, I panicked, so I'm just going to say my anteater is thankful for the intangible things in life. That's very, very deep. That's zen. That's very zen. Uh, all right, nicely done, Emma. Becca, what do you got for us? All right, so I made every finger a different anteater. Ooh. Uh, I'm down here. <laughs> and it's all it's members of my family so i'm thankful for my family oh that's so, so that's, adorable and you got them all together and they're one. all they're all anteaters with the you know fantastic yeah. and last up on pulse but certainly not least chloe what do you got for us i'm not an artist you guys so i did a very uh, uh traditional take on an anteater as you can see i've got his little leg and his arm and his snoot and they do have a fluffy tail, so I kind of just left that up there. And uh, in kindergarten fashion, wrote it on the thingy part. Friends, fam, et cetera, is what this anteater is thankful for. Fantastic. Everybody's always thankful for et cetera. It just means that there's more to be thankful for down the road. Uh, all right, nicely done, Pulse. Yeah. Let's bring it over to Half Hour Radio Hour. Show us what you got. Uh, Craig, let's start with you. All right, uh, so this is my anteater. Um, he's got a little, like, schnoz here with a tongue coming out to eat the ants um and then uh you know he's got some tongues coming out of these other other appendages uh oh, yeah. and, then he's, and then he's wearing a shirt that says i heart ants and a mustache so the ants won't know who he is because the you know the the hand eater would probably be pretty well known and then he's got three legs because i wasn't really sure if an ant eater had four or two legs so um you know so you just split the difference i just split the difference <laughs> All right, nicely done. Ellen, what do you got for us? Okay, this is my hand eater. This is his eye, his little ear, 
and his tongue's going down to this beautiful ice cream cone. He has little claws so it doesn't fall off the page and his tail. And he says, who needs ants? I have ice cream. Adorable. So he's mm. thankful for dairy. Nice. And who doesn't <laughs> love a good ice cream cone? All right. And finally, let's see, Chris, what do you got for us? This is my hand eater. Um, uh, these are, it's like, weirdly long ears but it loves itself so uh and this is a cute little eye smiling some feet and i drew a beauty mark on here because this year the anteater is grateful for its unique beauty it's gone through a journey of self-love with you know especially this year it's a good time to be introspective and focus on yourself and self-care and self-love so wonderful job all right half hour radio hour great work now it's up to the folks at home if you're watching us live get in the chat and cast your vote for which team did the best job with their hand ant eaters giving thanks on this wonderful friendsgiving show so vote for which one you liked more was it half hour radio hour or was it pools throw it in the chat and we are going to count up those votes and whoever wins is going to get their team an extra 300 points not something to scoff at especially when there's only 50 on the board right now so uh we're going to tally up those votes and we will be right back with the results. But first, we're gonna take a quick word from one of our sponsors. But before we do, like we like to do every week, here's a little trivia for you at home. Take a look at the silhouette and see if you can guess who this jolly fellow is. Here's a hint. No Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is complete without this guy bringing up the rear. Since 1924, he's always been there at the end of the festivities. See if you can figure out who this person is, and we'll tell you the answer right after a quick word from one of our sponsors. This Thanksgiving, I'd like to be with my family, but I'm trying to be responsible. Luckily, I can have a family dinner alone without feeling alone thanks to Give Thanks for Family. Give Thanks for Family puts all the awkward turkey day conversations together in one album. Just press play and it's like the family is right there with you at the table with conversations like. You know, when we were your age, your mother and I already had two kids. I find I feel a lot more calm using lavender every day with 20 milligrams of Advan. It is vegan, that's just bacon grease. It's called erotica and it's classy. Meet me in the garage, I have pod. And who could forget this classic? So stay safe and spend this Thanksgiving alone without feeling alone and pick up a copy of Gift Thanks for Family today. Order now and we'll include a bonus track. Grandpa farts himself awake on the couch. Welcome back. Could you, could you guess who this was? He's always the last person at the end of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. If you guessed Roscoe the janitor, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> Somebody's got to sweep up all that confetti and clean up all that mess. And Roscoe, thank you for everything that you've been doing for the last almost 100 years. We salute you. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. And uh, thank you for everybody uh, who threw your votes in for your favorite hand ant eater. Al, did we get a consensus on who won the extra 300 points? We did, uh, and it's uh, going to be half hour radio hour. And I think the ice cream took it. We had a lot of comments about the ice cream. Fantastic. All right. Well, nicely done with that ice cream licking ant eater, which means your team gets an extra 300 points, bringing your total up to 350. Pulse, we still got to put you on the board, but there is an opportunity for you to score some in this round. It is round two, where the trivia questions are worth 200 points each. Stealing gets you 100. It's still early. It's still anybody's game. Uh, now we're going to move into our uh, next set of questions but first off we need some audience participation on this one a couple of suggestions from you in the chat get those fingers ready here's what we need we need a name any name could be hank could be jill could be sally don't use those i just gave them to you but any other name like that feel free to type that in we need an animal let's skip anteater but any other animal that you can think of and we need a profession or a job title so we need a name an animal and a profession. Throw out one, two, three, any combination of those in the chat. We're gonna select those for something that we're gonna do later on down the road. But for right now, let's get into our next category. Now, speaking of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, 
which is on Thursday, obviously. It's been going on since 1924. Since the early 30s, there have been a series of floats, balloons, that have graced New York streets to commemorate Thanksgiving. And now everybody's familiar with the, the modern ones that they have nowadays, whether it's Spider-Man or whether it's a uh, you know, diary of a wimpy kid. And we all know these characters, but if you look back to the original balloons that they had at the Macy's parade, some of them were a little weird. So for this next game, we're gonna test our contestants ability to guess whether or not these floats actually existed in a game that I'm calling Float or Sinker. So this mm -hmm. is a little different. Here's how this works. In front of me, I have a list of 12 different characters that were all featured balloons in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade from the, uh, from the late 20s to the 40s. Now, here's the kicker. Some of them are real. Some of them are ones that I made up. So I will be asking each of you individually if the character that I name is a real or a fake Macy's Thanksgiving Day balloon. If you answer correctly, you'll get your team 100 points. Incorrectly gets you no points, but you'll each have an opportunity to answer two. So up to 200 points per person for your team. Make sense to everybody? Okay, yeah. great. We're <laughs> gonna start with Craig on this one. I love how on board everybody is. I'm gonna start with Craig on this one. Craig, you gotta tell me whether or not this balloon existed in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade character's name was Fritz the Dachshund. Hmm. I'm gonna say that Germany was the villains of World War One, World War II, so that did not exist in the 20s through the 40s. Fortunately, Fritz was the hero of the 1932 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. He's a Macy's original creation, so no points for that one. Emma, you're up next. Your character's name is the Goops. Real or fake? <laughs> fake. Emma, this one's real. It is a, uh, a series of characters based on a 1930 book by humorous uh, Gillette Burgess. And if you ever see the pictures, they're horrifying. But yes, the Goops were a real series of balloons in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, so no points. Moving over to Chris. Chris, let's, this one's for you. Your character's name, Salty Snail. <laughs> I'm a uh, hundred percent fake on that one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna uh, go all in on the fake. Oof, Chris, it's fake for one hundred points. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> all right. This next one goes over to Becca. Becca, Amelia Earhart, an Amelia Earhart balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Real or fake? Oh God. <laughs> Fake. Sinker. That's a sinker. You are correct for 100 points. They had plans to build the Amelia Earhart balloon, but they went missing. So 100 points <laughs> oh, for Holt. No oh, I'm sorry. Way. Too soon, Ellen? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this next one, we are going over to uh, Ellen. Actually, this one is for you. Tell me if this is real or fake. The Marx Brothers. Groucho, Harpo, Marx? Chico, Marx. The Marx Brothers. Yeah, mm. I think that's real. They were real. Yes, a series of balloons that the Marx Brothers teamed up with for Macy's gets you 100 points. That was 19, Ellen is always right. 1935. <laughs> she got she got to trust her gut a little bit more, but yes, she's been doing pretty well this game. All right, back over uh, to, let's see, Chloe, this one is for you. Tell me if this one is real or fake. The character's name is... Joe Jinx. I'm sorry, God, you cut out during that. Would you mind repeating that? Sure. Joe Jinx. Joe Jinx. I'm going to say that's fake. Sorry, Chloe. He's a real character uh, from a 1930 comic called Joe's Car, and he was a featured balloon in the Macy's mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Day Parade. All right, over to uh, top of the order again. We're going to start over with Craig. Craig, your character, Dagwood Bumstead. <laughs> um, Dagwood Bumstead. I think I'm going to say it's real. 
Unfortunately, he's a real cartoon <laughs> character, Isn't that but Blondie? not one that ever had a balloon in the yeah, movie. That's Bl- so Blondie's husband, right? right? Over two, yes. Also uh, has a sandwich named after him as well. All right, over to Emma. Emma, this one is for you. Real or fake? Peter Pumpkinhead. Real. Sorry, Emma, that one's fake. So no points awarded. I made that one up. All right, let's go over to Chris. Chris, this one is for you. Your character's name, Boob McNutt. Sorry. Get it out of this. Get out of your system now. Boob. Boob. Boob McNutt with two T's. Don't order that at McDonald's. <laughs> I'm actually going to go with real on this one. I'm going to go with real. Chris, it's a real balloon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from a 1930 yeah, yeah, yeah. comic of the same name, there was an actual balloon called Boob McNutt in the Macy's Thanksgiving parade. That's 100 points for you. All right. Uh, Becca, this one is for you. Dick Tracy. <laughs> Dick Tracy, I think that's a sinker. Sinker is your answer? You're right for 100 points. Dick Tracy never had a balloon in the Macy's parade. Nicely done. Okay. Let's go over to Ellen. Ellen, this one is for you. Your your balloon's name is Father Knickerbocker. (laughs) Real. He was real. 1936, Macy's original balloon, Father Knickerbocker. He wore a uh, colonial outfit with a tri-cornered hat, and he had a very long pointed nose like a snowman that actually got caught on an elevated train in Lincoln Square mid-parade. So, uh, yes, real balloon for 100 points. Uh, All right, last one of the category, and this one goes over to Chloe. Chloe, your balloon is called Morton the Nantucket Sea Monster. Real or (laughs) fake? Oh, this seems like a thing that would have come out of your brain, but I don't know. Morton, the Nantucket Sea Monster, you say? Morton, the Nantucket Sea Monster. I'm going to, I'm going to say real. Chloe, it's real for 100 points. Invented by a (laughs) Uh, a Nantucket store owner as a publicity stunt. For his, uh, for his puppet business on Nantucket Island, and then they brought it over to New York. So nicely done teams. Now, right now I have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'll have to score at uh, Pulse with 300 points. Correct. And Half Hour Radio Hour with 750 points. Right on the dot. <laughs> We're gonna give you both an opportunity to score 200 extra points for your team right now with a little parade showdown now, we took a suggestion uh, before this category got started. We were looking for an animal, a profession, and a name. Al, what did we come up with? We came up with uh, Phyllis the Bumblebee Theater Teacher. Phyllis the Bumblebee Theater Teacher. Okay, that's going to be our first one. And uh, not to make you scramble, but have a second one lined up for me. Uh, based on the coin flip, right now uh, we have Pulse. You're going to get the first go at this one. So it was Phyllis the, I'm sorry, Phyllis the Bumblebee School Teacher. Yep. Now here's what I need. Oh, sorry. Uh, so here's what I need from you, Pulse. Now we're all familiar with the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. What usually happens is there's two talking heads sitting in a booth as the the balloons go by, and they make some casual comment about the balloon, a little bit about its history, a little bit about what it's doing currently as it bobs by the window, uh, and just a quick little factoid, a little tidbit, something to entertain the folks who are watching the parade at home. Now I need two of you from the team to volunteer to be our commentators for our quarantine Thanksgiving Day Parade. And you're gonna give us a 30 second little window into what we would be seeing as we watch. I'll repeat the name again. Phyllis the Bumblebee Theater Teacher. As we watch Phyllis the Bumblebee Theater Teacher's balloon float by our window. So who's gonna step up and volunteer to do the commentary? I need two volunteers for the team. (laughs) <laughs> Craig, I'm Craig somebody join me. Pulse. Someone come join me. This is for, uh, for, for us? Pulse. For this us. is for Pulse. Oh, this is for Pulse. Yes. Okay, I can I can be one of the commentators. I can. Yeah. 
Yeah, my internet doesn't seem like it's as good as y'all, so you take that, please. Okay. All right, so Emma and okay. Becca, what are you telling the folks who are watching you live at home as the Bumblebee school teacher floats by the window? Phyllis. Hi, wow. Uh, an American, an American favorite this past mm -hmm. season. We, of course, have Phyllis, the Bumblebee theater teacher from the hit series Bumblebee High. Uh, and she's doing her classic dance move. And uh, a class of second graders actually made this balloon. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yep. They were people. from um woodland elementary school really actually the school that uh, dave chappelle graduated from yeah. so that's and they won their cereal box top contest and were and able to construct to this, make this to make this beautiful float that we're seeing in front of us yeah. Nicely done pulse <laughs> well that that balloon has passed which means it's time for our second balloon al what do we have uh, floating by next is Mary Jo, the bald eagle dentist. Mary Jo, the bald eagle dentist. Half hour radio hour. Let's hear some commentary. Two people, whichever two want to jump out first. Okay. Can we go? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Oh. Can I hear the balloon one more time? Yep, that's going to be Mary Jo, the bald eagle dentist. Oh my goodness. Look what we have here. Soaring Tell me, Leslie, above the what do we have here? We have. It is who? Who is it? Well, are you going to give me the honors? Are you going to give me New York favorite, Mary Jo, the dentist, the bald eagle. You know her, you love her. I'm so glad she's back this year. I'm so glad. Swooping in and drilling those cavities one by one. Mary one by jo one. Made popular only... by the educational video featuring stars such as Ariana Grande and Justin Bieber. Uh, Miss Mary Jo, the bald eagle, circulated public schools everywhere, and America loves her. America just loves that eagle. What is Thanksgiving without oral care? You know, it's not. Okay, it's a absolutely mistake, nothing. A mistake. We're so blessed. So grateful. <sighs> nice. Well, I'm sold. Uh, <laughs> everybody did a great job on those two. Uh, but now it's up to our audience at home to vote on which of the two teams gave us the best, most vivid color commentary on these delightful characters that you all helped create. So please vote in the chat which team should get an extra 200 points. Is it half hour radio hour or is it Pulse? We're gonna have our team, our quarantine in the chat counting up your votes. We'll get to the, uh, the results in just a moment, but it's time to move into our next trivia category. Now, I know, especially this time of year, everybody's been talking about birds. Just birds uh, to the left, birds up above, down below. You know, you, you never really know. Is everybody talking about birds? <laughs> we got a little, Al, what's going on? Uh, we're getting a, I'm getting a cross stream here. Uh, something's fluttering with my, my. Oh, quick, patch me through. Yeah, uh, all right, you're in, you're in. Yeah, patch me through, am I in? Okay, uh, yeah, hi, hello. Um, Christopher. Is, J Giblets, is that you? That's right, it's me, your turkey from last year, Giblets Montgomery. You Giblets. were going to eat me and then President One Term over there pardoned me. Pretty I, sweet, huh? I thought I wasn't going to see you again. I thought you were on the chopping block. Um, so this is, this is a little awkward. Um, was it awkward for you? Well, I, pretty um, for me, seeing a person who wanted to eat me pretty publicly. Well, I mean, it is it is Thanksgiving, and I mean, you are a turkey. But congr congratulations. I'm going to cut straight to the jump, all right? Okay, sure. Um, Biden's sure. made it pretty clear he's not going to pardon another turkey, all right? I'm on the run. Since my last pardon, I've, I've been in some trouble for my other crimes. You, I'm sorry, you got pardoned by the president last year, and then you still committed crimes? Well, a lot of them caught up to me. I've been a con bird for many years. I'm the actually, I'm the real DB Cooper. Well, that's I, a that's a. a huge I left you so that. many clues on that one. Birds live in coops. DB stood for damn bird. I mean, I've really made. I jumped out of a plane. What human would do that? I, I okay. I guess the, the pieces fit. Anyways, uh, what are All you doing? It's fit. Giblets, what are you doing here? What are you doing here in the middle of our trivia show? I need a place to hide, Chris. I need a place to hide out this Thanksgiving. They're gonna come for me. But look, I know you you're doing your little trivia thing, your little your little humor. I. I thought I could throw in some questions maybe while we're doing this. It sounds like a little trivia thing. We work really hard Beg on the show. Beg my pardon, Chris. 
Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, fine. If uh, you need a place to lay low till the heat dies down, um, but you gotta, oh, you I, gotta, you gotta pitch in. Do you have something prepared for our contestants? I do have stuff? something prepared because I beg your pardon. I always come prepared. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I beg your pardon is what I'm about to do. I've got some questions about the presidential pardons that were considered kind of controversial. Okay. Well, old giblets McGovery here. All right. Well, uh, pardon me. The floor is yours. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Christopher. <laughs> now, this first question is for Pulse because the name sounds like poultry. Pulse, ever since there's been presidents, there have been controversial presidential pardons. Even George Washington himself caught some heat from old Alexander Hamilton when he pardoned two men sentenced to death for their involvement in this violent yet boozy uprising. What is that uprising? Oh, God. Violent yet boozy. The booze uprising of... Was it the Whiskey Rebellion? I think that was the thing. I just don't know what it happened. That sounds great. Or that sounds like yeah. I keep throwing out answers, and they're they're always wrong. So I personally, I love your answers. I don't care. So five seconds. Shiblets, we're gonna go with the, the whiskey rebellion. I'm glad you went with the whiskey rebellion because, of course, it's the whiskey rebellion brought to you by Wild Turkey. Wow. Wild Turkey, the other turkey that'll get you drunk. It was great in eggnog too. I can... This next one goes over <laughs> half hour radio. <laughs> half hour radio. In 1974, President Gerald Ford got in a lot of hot water, like a turkey being boiled, just a month into his new office when he decided to pardon this guy facing obstruction of justice charges. Some say it's even the reason why he never got reelected. It's Richard Nixon, right? It's Nixon, he, yeah. right? It's R Richard Nixon. Final answer? Final answer, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon is correct. That's the yeah. only time I will ever call Richard Nixon correct. <laughs> Going back over to Poltz here. Poltz, not a lot of people remember this, but this big shot, he owned the New York Yankees. And he thought he could get away with making illegal campaign contributions. Well, turns out he could. Because in 1989, Ronald Reagan gave him the old pardon, too. What was his name? Um, I just don't know this. <laughs> That's fair. I'm not telling you. Um, Jim Johnson? Final answer, Jim Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Famous, famous New York Yankees. I'll never know. I like, I'm trying to think. I gotta give you five seconds here on the clock. All right, we gotta I move it right along. Like, I don't know, but no, I don't know. Four, and three, sounds like two. Jim Johnson was Jim incorrect. Johnson. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to you, and I'm sorry to Jim Johnson. <laughs> nice gentleman. This is gonna go right over to the half hour radio. Can we get a repeat of the question? Yeah, absolutely, May. Not a lot of people remember, but this big shot, he owned the New York Yankees and he thought he could get away with making illegal campaign contributions. Well, turns out he could, because in 1989, Ronald Reagan gave him the old presidential pardon. Uh, that would okay. be Stein, Steinbrenner, right? George Steinbrenner, he owned the, he owned the Yankees. Wait, I'm sorry, was, did you say Yankees player? No, I said Yankees owner. Yeah, George oh, Steinbrenner. <laughs> George Steinbrenner. Finally, George right. Steinbrenner right. is correct. Yeah, that's the right. sixth time I'll ever say George Steinbrenner was correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, half hour. This stays with you. You know, sometimes you got to look out for your family, Chris. Do you know what I mean, Chris? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. What are you okay. accusing me? <laughs> I'm just saying you know, look out for your family, your brother, your cousins, a turkey. You know, I don't know, whatever. Sometimes you got to look out for your family. <laughs> Like this president who got accused of nepotism when he pardoned his half-brother after he, the half-brother, got caught selling cocaine. The best part is, the guy gets locked up again less than a year later for drunken disorderly conduct. Who is the president, though? I just love the way you oh. said cocaine. It's not it's hard. Cocaine. Is it? Is it no. harder? I, that was like, I don't know. I feel like it's further back than Carter. For cocaine, I don't know how old cocaine is, I guess. Seems new to me, but maybe not. I'll answer it's that question. For... It's as old as fun itself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, giblets. Um, That's right. Oh, giblets. I feel like it's like uh, <laughs> Lyndon Johnson. Sure. I feel yeah. that way. You got the last one right, Strine Reckon. 
I don't know if this is right though. I also feel like it could be like Thomas Jefferson. Gotta give you five seconds. <laughs> Let's go with Jefferson. Let's do it. Let's do Jefferson. Well, he said the eighties. Oh, did he say the eighties? No, I didn't. Nah, uh, let's that go was with part Jefferson. of the last question. Is it Bill Clinton? Okay. I'm sorry, what was it? Jefferson was the final answer. I'm sorry. Jefferson is not correct. That question's gonna go right back over to the poultry girls. Poultry. Okay. Cocaine, cocaine. Cocaine, cocaine. I don't know. Does George I don't... W have a famous brother? It's a he well, gave I know Jared K. The Kenyans are famous. And that feels right. like around the right time, sixties, seventies. Yeah, I was thinking maybe Jared. I don't know. Family. It's probably wrong. I'm gonna put five seconds up on the board, up on my talents here. Let's do it. You can have that, Jim Kennedy, Jared K. I'm sorry, it's not JFK. It was, in fact, Bill Clinton. Slick William sent oh, the pardon to his brother. Damn, I knew the story sounded familiar. Didn't it just? It's a story it as old as time. Really? <laughs> all right, I got one final question for you here. This is going to stay with Pultz. Is that all right? Pultz, even the guy who let me go, who, again, not going to name, has made a few mistakes. Earlier this year, when my buddy Donnie commuted this friend of his, even though he was definitely guilty of obstruction of justice in the Russian interference probe, he probably had a good reason, right? <laughs> okay. One of the many names we've seen flash across the news <laughs> was pardoned for it's been a lot this Russian year, don't worry. <laughs> Several. Like, oh, boy. did he what, Did he write a book? Chloe, sorry, what'd you say? I said, oh boy, could it be Comey? I don't know, there's so many people it could be. I don't think it was Comey, because it wasn't Comey the one who like had it all together and then he fired him. I don't know, truly, I don't know. Gonna need to put five seconds of battalion. I'm sorry Bye, to all you. those watching. <laughs> yeah, me too. Give me that final Ooh. answer. Unfortunately, Comey is not correct. Half hour, it bounces over to you. I believe I know who it is, but can I hear the question one more time just to be sure? Absolutely. So earlier this year, my good buddy and former partner, Donnie, commuted this friend of his, even though he was definitely guilty of obstruction of justice in the Russian interference probe. Roger Stone. Final answer? Final mm -hmm. answer. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Roger Stop. Stone and I were preparing to flee the country when our pardons came in. Pretty sweet, right? <laughs> Perfect timing. Oh. Is he as well, wild as he, is, as he is, as he looks? Well, Chris, I gotta say, there's no place like home for the holidays. So invite me into your home. Uh, um, Chris? All right. Well, look, I just, if you can be cool no, wait, about Chris, this. Chris, 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 yeah. Chris. Shh, shh. Do you hear that? I'm not in your... Chris, no, I don't, I don't hear that, no. It's pilgrims. They've caught up to me. Old Giblets isn't going down without a fight. Uh, uh, Giblets, just don't do anything too crazy, okay? You Giblets... don't see me on Thanksgiving Day. Read the papers, baby. Giblets out! Okay, uh... G Giblets <laughs> Montgomery, um... Coming to a independent free state near you. Uh, thank you very much, Giblets, for that round. Uh, now, that was the end of the trivia category. Also the end of round two, but we still have some votes to tally up. Al, did we get a, a tally count on who won the last uh, the last audience vote? We did. That was a uh, half hour radio hour. Fantastic. So half hour radio hour, you're getting yourselves another 200 points tacked on to your score, which means right now I have Holtz with 500 points. Correct. And I have the half hour radio hour in the lead with 1,350 points. Now, it seems like a gap, but we still got one last round to go. There's still plenty of time for uh, Pulse to catch up. And we will get to round three where the points are worth 300 for a correct answer, 150 for a steal. But first, we're going to take another quick word from one of our lovely sponsors. Enjoy. This 
Thanksgiving? Do it in the can. Paid for by the Cape Cod Cranberry Farmers Association. <laughs> oh, we're back. Sorry, I was just craving cranberry sauce for some weird reason. Anyways, welcome back to the show. Uh, so as I said before the break, we're about to get into round three. Points are worth 300 for a correct answer. Stealing gets you 150. And we're going to get to the trivia. Uh, but first, it's the end of the show. We're about to get into Thanksgiving. And what traditionally comes at the end of Thanksgiving Black Friday shopping. That's right. We couldn't we couldn't possibly do a Thanksgiving show without having a little fun at the expense of Black Friday. And this year in particular, most people aren't even going to be going near a lot of stores because of COVID Corona reasons. We're trying to keep a social distance and the responsible thing would be to stay home and do all of your shopping from the comfort of your living room, which is what our contestants are about to do right now. Because before we get to some trivia, we have a scavenger hunt planned for y'all. So get ready because you're gonna to need to do a little bit of running around. Here's how this works. I have a list of Black Friday shopping items that you're gonna to need to root around your apartments, your homes, wherever you are right now, and come back to the camera with in less than, I'm sorry, in 60 seconds, okay? So I'm gonna tell you the three things that you're gonna to need to go and find. Now keep in mind, these aren't specific items. You're looking for gifts that you could potentially give to somebody on your Christmas shopping list or, or your holiday shopping list. The audience is gonna vote on which team they thought picked the best gifts. So these are your three categories. No Black Friday shopping spree would be complete if you didn't find yourself a hot new children's toy. So something that would be a hot new children's toy, something from the health and beauty department. As we said earlier, this is a good year for wellness and taking care of yourself. And you might wanna give something to somebody else that's also gonna do them just as well. So make sure you find something that is a hot new health and beauty item. And then also this year's big gadget or gizmo. So it could be tech, could be uh, some, some sort of gizmo or gadget or doodad, but it's the hot new item that you think everybody's gonna want. Now, we're gonna put 60 seconds on the clock. Do your best to come back with those three categories of items. And when you do come back, the audience is gonna vote. So remember, we're not looking for anything specific. Use your imagination, creativity will score you points on this one. Everybody ready to go? All right, ready, set, attention shoppers, stores are open, go find those items. Now, Al, you have actually waited in line outside for, was it an Xbox or uh, you've waited for a game oh. console before, right? A Wii and uh, the uh, uh, PlayStation. I've never had any intention or inkling to ever want to go near a store on Black Friday. I don't know about you, but there's just, <laughs> the whole thing just feels ridiculous to me. Was it like fun, entertaining? Like, what did you do? Did you sit out in the cold? So we camped out overnight and uh, Walmart actually had their opening at midnight and I had somebody waiting there for a Wii. Uh, they bought a Wii there for me and brought it over to Best Buy where I was camping and we set it up in the parking lot with a generator and let everybody in line play the Wii before they could buy the Wii. Wow. All right. So you had a little uh, fun story adventure time on your... Uh, and we, your yeah, it was awesome. We cooked pressure. and we did, uh, uh, we played football in the parking lot. It was a good time. And we yeah. got eight nice. seconds, seven seconds on the clock. Seven seconds, six seconds, everybody. I don't know if you can hear me, but you got to come back to your computers. You're running out of time, everybody. I hear scrambling. I hear scurrying. Craig, I know for a fact you live in a studio, but right? this can't be that hard. <laughs> it's huge. It's a huge never, studio apartment. I've seen your place. Seen, it's not that big. You've never seen the back of my closet. All right, everybody. We are waiting on an Emma. We need an Emma. All right, everybody is back. Okay. A little over time, but we're going to allow That's, it for It's fun Thanksgiving, sake. Chris. I know. It's Friendsgiving now. We got we to gotta make room for friends here. So we are going to uh, go uh, person by person, team by team. You're going to show the audience what you brought back. And you're going to explain why it's the perfect gift this year. Everybody ready? Oh. <laughs> All right, Ellen, we're going to start with you. You sound the most ready. Uh, Ellen, what did you give us for a hot new children's toy? It's so morbid. Go for it. Um, uh, it it's a knife. <laughs> a, a kitchen knife. <laughs> All right, every kid needs a kitchen knife, right? All right, you know, uh, let's see. Um, uh, health it's and beauty new. supplies. Um, this is actually a beer belt. 
So the nice thing about this is it's um, health and beauty because um, if you've like thrown out your back or anything and you need to carry your beer with you so you don't have to continue to go to the fridge, you know, health, hydration through beer. Nice. Plus it's a good way to work on your six pack. All right, and what do you got for this year's mm -hmm. big gadget? Gadgets or gizmos? I, I, have, um, I have a cow. Okay. Um, you know, if your Uber is coming very slowly um, or your bike's broken, anything like that, you can just ride your cow. Nice. All right. Save a horse, ride a cow. Love it. All right. Uh, <laughs> over to, uh, let's stick with Half Hour Radio Hour. Craig, what you got for us? What's your, what's your hot new children's toy? Uh, so my children's toy is this Slim Jim. Uh, <laughs> I figure you can, like, you can, like, put it in a circle, throw it like a, like a ring toss or something. Um, or, you know, just, it could be like a character. And then when you're done with it, um, you can eat it. So it's like very little cleanup when you've got kids. Okay, great. Uh, what was your health, beauty, uh, wellness supplies? Uh, my health, beauty, and wellness su supplies is this can of original Pam. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great bronzer. Um, no SPF, so you can get as tan as you want, look as healthy, as young as you feel. And uh, yeah, it's only like three ninety nine, so pretty All good right. deal. It's, it's not a, just a deal, it's a steal. Okay, and finally, this year's Big Gadget or Gizmo, what do you got for us? Um, I've got this, um, uh, it's called an iPod. Uh, most people probably haven't heard of it. Uh, it's exactly like your phone, except you can't make calls or send messages or go on the internet uh, or play on apps. It's just music. Mm -hmm. And I assume you were using that in your apartment to hold the door open. Um, uh, yeah, or... yeah, I actually just, I, I found it. Uh, it was, yeah, I was holding the door open. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. All right, finally, Chris, what do you got for us? What was your, your children's toy? You know, I, are you sick of buying toys for kids and then they just play with the box? Sort of like a kitten almost? Um, happens all the time. So the newest kids toy is actually a bowl. The okay. fancier of the empty boxes. Um, yeah, right. for the imagination of the child, for the imagination of the child. It's good imagination toy. Great. Health and beauty, wellness supplies. What do you got? Yeah, this little novel item right here, it's a map, right, to be worn, right? Okay. At all times. You know? I can't see that catching on, but okay, good. All right, and finally, this year's Big Gadget or Gizmo? I have a book. And it's because, you know, what's old is new again. And we're really, vintage is in, thrifting is in. So real books back in, back up. Right. Books, and I, books and iPods from Half Hour Radio Hour taking a page from the, uh, from the early 2000s. All right, over to Pulse. What do you got for us? Emma, let's start with you. What do you have? Uh, so for a uh, children's story, I have this shoe de de deodorant, deodorizer. Okay. I'm really having trouble with that. And that's also something the kid can have trouble with as well. Saying it, spraying it in your shoe or anywhere you want to spray it. Fantastic. And what about a health and beauty supply? Um, for health and beauty, I have this rose water. Ooh. You, you spray great. it on yourself and you become great. All right. Awesome. And then this year, <laughs> big gadget or gizmo? Um, this snow globe, you shake it and it will take you back to 2007. Oh, wow. So it's part time machine, part novelty item. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Chloe, what do you got for us? And for a children's toy, I have this ukulele. Uh, it is small for child hands. Uh, it's a fun color, which kids love. And it is, uh, can make a myriad noises. That's All cool. Right. Drives parents nuts, but kids love it. What do you yeah. got for uh, health and beauty supplies? Uh, I have this Biomiracle peel-off mask. Uh, it's not so on the nose for this uh, segment, but it's really nice. And also it hurts a lot to peel it off. Because That's how you know it's it. working. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> All right, awesome. And then for this year's Big Gadget or Gizmo? It's really from 2017, but it's timeless. The Nintendo Switch, um, it has saved me throughout this quarantine. And because I think things are going to still be quarantining for a little while, it's going to continue to save me. I recommend fully. All right, awesome. And uh, last but absolutely not least, Becca, what do you got for us? Uh, what's your children's toy? Yeah, so for kids' toy, I have this almost finished uh, mason jar of homemade trail mix. 
Okay. It's kind of like an instrument. So they can just like dangle it around. It's like fun to throw, but parents should be aware that there are almonds in there. So if the child has allergies, the top just needs to stay on. Okay, all, great. All so it's like edible maracas. So just Exactly, exactly. Nice. Or don't nice. eat it and just look at it. All right, great. And um, what's your, your wellness supplies? Well, it's a package. So it's this back massager, a back roller, and an open bag of Epsom salt. And it's open Ooh. because you know that's like that's like the guarantee that it's good. It's been quality assured, tested, you know, made sure that it's not uh, fake Epsom salt. Somebody actually got a hand in there. That's great. Absolutely. People have, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that it's just like the stress of this year, roll it all out and then soak. Love so. it. I could use one of those. All right. And finally, this year's big gadget or gizmo. What can you give us? Kitchen gadget, kitchen gadget. This is like an individual strainer. You know, you're not cooking the big Thanksgiving meal. You're not cooking for a lot of people. It's just you in your studio apartment. Why use a big colander? Just get the pasta out with this. It's the new, it's the new kitchen gadget. I love it. I'm seeing a trend with all of our contestants tonight. Simplicity is the key to the best gifts. And I 100% uh, concur, but it's not up to me to choose who did the best job. It's up to you watching at home. So get in the chat and let us know which team is the best gift givers, the best Black Friday shoppers. Uh, is it half hour radio hour or is it Pulse? Throw your vote in the chat and that team will get an extra 300 points based on your decision. And while we count those votes, we have one last category to go tonight. And we're gonna stick with our Black Friday trivia because there's a lot of history behind Black Friday that most people aren't even familiar with. We just kind of know it as this annoying thing that some people have to put up with. But we're gonna ask our contestants if they know some of the down and dirty, nitty gritty things about Black Friday in our last category tonight called Back in Black. So again, these are all Black Friday related or adjacent questions. So uh, this one is going to start off with half hour radio hour. You get the first question for 300, stealing gets you 150. All right. Retail employees may still have flashbacks about this product developed by Tyco in the mid 90s, originally invented to be a cuddly chimpanzee, then briefly a Looney Tunes Tasmanian devil toy. It eventually landed as this must have children's toy that sent desperate parents into a Black Friday frenzy. Mm. What was the year again? I did not give you a year. It was the mid nineties. Mid nineties. Um, was it yes, anything it, like a Tickle Me Elmo? Was that? Does it end up being that? I don't know why my brain. I feel like Tickle Me Elmo was later. Okay. Than mid, I feel like it was like late nineties, early two thousands. Okay. Ellen, you are muted. muted, Ellen. Just so you know. What's the name of the spinning guy from Looney Tunes? Tasmanian Devil. That was um, part of I'll the I'll give question. you a couple of more seconds, and I'm going to need an answer from you. <laughs> No idea. Uh, my mind went Furby, but that's it, more 80s. Um, okay, do you need an answer or I gotta call time? It's Tickle Go Me Elmo. Tickle Me Elmo. Final answer? Yeah. Alan, you finally came in the clutch. It's Tickle Me Elmo for 300 Whoa. points. <laughs> Good job, Chris. Finally getting it in under the wire. Okay, this one goes over to Pulse for 300. In 2010, as a counterpoint to Black Friday, this multinational financial corporation partnered with the National Trust for Historic Preservation to create Small Business Saturday, encouraging shoppers to patronize local brick and mortar businesses. What is the, the financial corporation that organized Small Business Saturday? Financial corporation. So like a bank? What was the year, Chris? Did you see 2010. 2010. 2010. 2010. Financial corporation? Yeah, like what like, is uh, an example of that? Chase or something? Yeah. Or a, yeah. a Bank of America. Financial corporation. Oh, bank of America sounds right. Capital One. I'm not like financial corporation just needs a bank. Yeah, that's how I'm interpreting it. I don't know. I will give you a couple more seconds. I'm going to need an answer from you. Bank of America. Good America. Bank of America. Yeah. Bank of America. Final answer? Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not mm -hmm. Bank of America, which means half hour radio hour for 150 points. Can you give me an answer? 
How do you guys feel about Wells Fargo? I, I feel good about bank, that. But let, we can do it. It's not a bank, but it's a financial institution. Yeah, so I'm saying I think that's good because I don't think it's a bank. Yeah, no, it's not. Yeah, let's go with Wells Fargo. Final answer? Final answer. It's not Wells Fargo either. You see it on all the commercials for Small Business Saturday. It's American Express. American oh. Express co-sponsors oh. Small Business Saturday along with the National Trust for Historic Preservation. So no points to either team. But we're going to move on to the next question. This one stays with Half Hour Radio Hour. Yours for 300 the first recorded use of the term Black Friday had nothing to do with shopping, but rather a financial crisis when two ruthless Wall Street financiers bought up as much of this commodity as possible until their scheme was disclosed, causing the market to crash on September 24th, making that the first ever Black Friday. What was the item that they were buying in huge quantities? So I know for a fact first Black Friday was in the early 1950s. In the early 1950s, I'm thinking it might be if we're talking like it he's might talking be about the financial. He, he's talking about the financial crisis, the Black Friday, the term that was used in the 20s, right? 1929, they called Black Friday when the when the stock market crashed. Well, they buy like, either way, either way, I think it's oil or coal. <laughs> yeah, well, what looking about for the gold? name of a commodity. What but it's gold? Black Friday. Why would they name it gold? Why would they name it like like the commodity? Black, gave the black's, name, a, right? black's a financial term for like having made profit for a quarter. Okay, what do you think it is, Craig, though? I don't know. I, I, I said gold is an option. A few Just more seconds, and then I will need an answer from you. Whatever you guys think. I, uh... Unfortunately, I need an answer. I got to call time. Let's go gold. Gold. Final answer? Final answer. Jay Gould and Jim Fisk bought up an absurd amount of gold causing the stock market to crash, <laughs> making it the first Black Friday. So 300 points for you on that one. Nicely done. Wasn't that half points? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. That was. That was for 150. Thank All you very right. much, Al. Just making sure. Nope. That's why we got you in the background. All right. Yeah, thank no, you. 150 no. points. So this one stays with half hour No, they stole hour. it, didn't they, or no? I sorry, think that, that was, last question stayed. No, that was for us. 300. You're absolutely nope. right. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. You were the first ones to get that, so that was right. We had the one about the said Wells Fargo for the one before that. Exactly, yeah. See, Al, I thought I was right. All right, thank you, Al. <laughs> Love you. Appreciate everything you do. Thank you. All I'm right. shutting down the uh, stream. So then this one uh, goes over to Pulse. This one is yours for 300 points. The modern name for Black Friday dates back to the late 1960s and refers to the Friday after Thanksgiving where there was a tradition of hordes of people flooding into this East Coast city. Uh, I'm sorry, this East Coast city for the annual Army-Navy football game and the huge pain that it brought to locals, commuters, and police officers who had to deal with the bedlam. So the, the name for Black Friday as the Friday after Thanksgiving originated in which East Coast city? Army-Navy football game. Okay. The Naval Academy? is in Maryland? Annapolis, Maryland? Maybe. It might be. Might not be. <laughs> where would the where would the army be? I have no idea. Greenpoint? Greenpoint. But I don't Emma? I mean I just have my own confusions, but I'll work that out on my own time. <laughs> <laughs> no, work it out on our time. I'll, so I'll, I'll slow us down. Okay, a couple more seconds. I'll need an answer from you. I think we'll go. We'll go with what you say. Annapolis. Yeah, Maryland. I think the Naval Academy is in Annapolis, but I don't know where the Army Academy is. If that is a thing, if okay, that's Okay, do you need an answer? Or I got to call time. It could it be New York City also? Who? who yeah. Okay, I'm Let's sorry. Go I got to call Annapolis? time. Annapolis. Annapolis, Maryland. Yeah. yeah under the wire, but it's still not Annapolis, so I'm sorry, that's not the correct answer. Uh, but that means half hour radio hour, you can actually steal now for 150 points if you can name the city that originally coined the term Black Friday as the Friday after Thanksgiving. Ellen, you looked like you knew. Okay, so I'm between two cities. I was, my first guess is Annapolis. My second guess, oh, and... because you said city. Uh -huh. I know it's not DC. I know it's not. A couple York. seconds, I and I do need an answer from you. Philadelphia. Where, is Philadelphia. Okay, I let's do it. Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I know final it's on answer. the East Coast. Yeah. Final answer. 
Ellen, you're killing it this game. It's Philadelphia for 150 <laughs> points. What the heck? I'm from DC, so it's like right next to I'm from DC. That's why I knew that Annapolis had. Yeah. All right, well, anyways, the one Naval last Academy. question to go in the game. This one stays with half hour radio hour. This is yours for 300 points. In 19, I'm sorry, in the 1900s, in an, I'm sorry, in the 1900s, in an effort to boost retail sales, the Retail Dry Goods Association pressured this president to move Thanksgiving up a week to the second to last Thursday in November in order to extend the holiday shopping season that confused so many people that some states decided to observe both the original and the new date that year. Who was the president that screwed up Thanksgiving for Americans? He's a 20th century president. It was a little confusing. Like I can reword that if you'd like me to. Yeah, one more time, maybe? Sure thing. This 20th century president, in an effort to boost retail sales, the Dry Goods Association pressured him to move Thanksgiving up a week to the second to last Thursday in November, rather than the last Thursday in November, to extend the shopping season. In the confusion, so many states didn't know which Thanksgiving to celebrate that they decided to observe both Thanksgivings that year instead of just the one. Who was the president who committed the blunder? I, I think it's FDR. He would have wanted to est extend the shopping season to give people a longer time to stimulate the economy for Christmas. I think it was FDR. Sounds good. That makes sense, because I think my parents right? would have been like, we lived through this and it was weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's, go with, let's go with the Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Final answer? Final answer. Craig, you nailed it completely on the head <laughs> for that reason specifically. Yeah. And they were so confused that they actually named the phony Thanksgiving, Franksgiving. Uh, because they couldn't figure <laughs> out which one they were supposed to observe. So that's 300 points for half hour radio hour. That is the last question of the game. And that brings us to the end of the game, which means, uh, I'm sorry, Al, did we get a vote on uh, who had the best? We did. Uh, so the best scavenger hunt results. Um, I don't know how you want to handle it. We were tied. And then I requested more votes in the chat for a tiebreaker. And the only vote that followed that was somebody who already voted. So is that, are we going to count that extra vote for someone who was paying attention? I'm going to say one vote per person. Well, then uh, we're still tied. To, to not yep. skew the results. So that is a tie, which we've never had a tie. Oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> one second, one second. I have to just check if this is another. Uh, yeah, no. So they already voted too. So the, the, anyone who chimed in <laughs> afterwards uh, was already accounted. We can vote. vamp for the forty second delay to see if anybody's <laughs> desperate enough to actually jump in. Tre hold on, wait, wait, wait. Teresa Dipino, just one second. Uh, that one counts. That one counts. Hold on, I think it counts. Uh, it was not counted before. Yep. Okay. So Teresa Dipino with the tiebreaker for half hour radio hour. All right, well, half hour radio hour, you can thank Teresa DeVino for your extra, you. extra uh, 300 you are, points. Actually. You're Teresa a mystery DeVino. fan out there. Uh, thank you to everybody who's been voting in the chat. We really do appreciate y'all being here uh, live for the show and, uh, and chiming in. So that brings your final scores up to Holtz with 500 points out, correct? Correct. And then half hour radio hour, we have you in the lead with 2,700 points, which means that you are going to be tonight's big winner for our Friendsgiving <laughs> special. And uh, we want to thank both of our teams so much for coming out to play tonight. We hope you had a good time. Pulse, thank you so much for coming on to play. We really hope you had a good time. It, while you have a couple of seconds, do you want to tell the folks at home, maybe you've got friends and family who are watching what, what you're thankful for this year? Do you want to give any shout outs to anybody? I'm thankful for my team, Pulse. <laughs> they are great. Me too. <laughs> they really are great. Thank you for teams. All right, fantastic. Well, that, uh, again, thank you so much for, for coming on. And uh, as always, and we say this every time, we have friends of ours from, from PIG come on the show. Uh, Providence Improv Guild, one of my favorite places. You guys are still doing live shows on YouTube. Um, so is, is there anything that you want to plug, any websites or anything that um, you want people to follow? I think the I mean, upcoming, um, oops, sorry, you go ahead, Chloe. No, no, it's OK. The upcoming uh, game show that Pig does is happening this Saturday. Would I lie to you? So, okay, great. I'll be so tuning we... in. I'll be in the comments. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah, I've seen it uh, before too. It's a lot of fun. So we will put links up on our page. Uh, you can always check them out on Facebook. I believe they're at Improv Pig. 
uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you can be sure to look them up online and we will make sure that we let our folks who aren't familiar with them get familiar with them because they're a wonderful organization and one that I love very much. And uh, so that leads us to tonight's big winner, Half Hour Radio Hour. Congratulations on being tonight's Woo! Friendsgiving champions. And is there anything that you're thankful for that you want to shout out to the folks back home? I would like to say, I don't know where Ellen and Chris are, but I'm thankful for these two and all the hard work they put in this season. They've been really fantastic and uh, we've had a lot of fun working on this show. Awesome. And for anybody who hasn't listened to the half hour radio hour, uh, Craig, do you want to just tell the folks at home a little bit about where they can find it? Yeah. Uh, half hour radio hour is available wherever you uh, can get podcasts. Uh, Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, I think is a podcast thing. I don't know who uses it, but um, <laughs> yeah, um, we just finished up our first season. Uh, second season is coming early 2021. Um, so yeah, check it out. It's a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah, they have a great show. Be sure to check it out. Again, we will post links. You can always find them on our page. And you are not going home empty-handed tonight, Half Hour Radio Hour, because this is a legit-ass game show, and you're going to win a legit-ass prize. But I think our good friend Giblets is going to come out here and show you exactly what it is that you want. Giblets, get on out here. Chris, good news. It wasn't Pilgrims. It was just the head next door looking for some stuffing. <laughs> Giblets. <laughs> Oh, half hour radio hour tonight you will be going home with a potato chip can full of a spring snake brought to you by weisenheimer brothers old time pranks weisenheimer where jokes are mean all right and that is yours to keep we will send that to one of you we only get one we're not made of spring snakes here but uh, we hope you enjoy and uh, as always, uh, as we like to say every week, uh, first of all, thank you so much to everybody who's watching tonight. We hope you have a safe and happy holiday. You can always find us right here every Tuesday night where we have a new show every week, new teams, new characters, new ads, uh, always a good time. And thank you to everybody who's been watching. I know for uh, myself uh, and for Al, we are so thankful for all of you who keep coming back week after week to watch the show. We're thankful for all of our new fans and followers. You can always find us at Quarantine The Game Show. On, I'm sorry, at Quarantine Game Show on Facebook and at Quarantine the Game Show at gmail.com. Don't worry, Chris. It's, it's, it's up. They can see it. So Okay, great. <laughs> well, then there we go. Uh, so you can, find it, you can find it down there. And in the meantime, we hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday. And as we like to say every week, stay safe, stay sane, and take care of each other. Thank you all so much for watching tonight. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, especially my family. I love you all. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great night. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.